especially with the beaten down retailers, it's a very tough environment for all things brick and mortar. Take Macy's, very well-run company, but when they reported the latest quarter back in August, stock plunged 14%. It was primarily because their credit card business came in weak. At this point, Macy's now sells for less than four times the midpoint of their full-year earnings forecast. If they can make the numbers, this makes the stock ridiculously cheap. Wall Street's clearly skeptical. Let's talk about the conundrum with Jeff Nett. He's the excellent chairman and CEO who will be retiring in February to be succeeded by Tony Spring, who's also here, the president and CEO-elect, who's been running the Bloomingdale's division since 2014. Gentlemen, thank you for coming down to our humble abode. It's great to be here, Jim. Congratulations to you, Tony. Thank you very much. And Jeff, you've done tremendous things. You've got, uh, you fixed the balance sheet to a degree where I feel much more safe. You've got the free cash flow doing great. You've got a business that is humming. And then last quarter, you did not do the credit card number. And suddenly everybody said, all this means nothing. It's the credit card. Could you, before we talk about the future, explain the past and whether that makes any sense to you? So what I tell you about the credit card is that we saw certainly, I think that in all of retail right now, you've got a customer that is, is under, under stress. And so you have these rising credit balances that is happening in the industry. And so that's what we were calling out. We saw higher delinquencies in the second quarter, and that's what we reported. Um, that, though, is now we're not standing still. We have a very healthy credit portfolio. We work with our partner, which is Citibank, and we really work on underwriting strategies. We're going to retain a healthy credit bar, uh, uh, portfolio. We're also working to make sure that we are attracting new customers. We're migrating existing customers. And we're making sure that we do that with this healthy balance sheet that we have. All right, so we so, feel good about that. Okay, so Tony, I look at the balance sheet and it, I see the free cash flow. Let's put it that way. The free cash flow is bountiful, which makes me feel that what your incoming CEO, do you have to look at the uh, the, the bonds that are due in 2029 and 2028? Or can you focus on how to generate great returns and grow the business? Which is the way you're going to be approaching things, or do you have to do both? I think you have to do both, Jim. I think the uh, out years come before you uh, know them. But our, our, obviously, our short-term focus with the team is uh, delivering profitable sales growth. We have these five growth vectors. Today, we announced the 30 new Macy's small format stores. So that's a key part of our growth is to have a balanced uh, portfolio. But it's also leaning into the success of Bloomingdale's and Blue Mercury and luxury. It's also the private brand uh, portfolio and making sure that we have a modernized assortment of private brands and market brands. Uh, this is the, the strategy in making sure that our short-term objectives, that the team is focused and delivering, and at the same time paying attention to what happens in the out years. All right, so you come from Bloomingdale's, which has been a tremendous performer. Even when things are tougher, it does well. Uh, what I see is 34 Bloomingdale's, and I'm wondering, should that be 70 Bloomingdale's, and there should be maybe fewer bases? Because when you've got a good hand, don't you put all your money behind it? I love Bloomingdale's. I've grown up with Bloomingdale's. I'm glad you and uh, your family love Bloomingdale's. Well, my wife, too much. <laughs> you can never buy too much, okay. Jim. 2022, best year, best uh, sales year, profit year, service year. So team's done an incredible job. And it's all about curation of product and the delivery of a, a better experience for the customer. Retail is theater. And so I believe in the growth of uh, Bloomingdale's. We have opportunity to grow stores. They have their own small format concept called Bloomies. We have the opportunity to grow the off-price business. We've got a successful small division within Bloomingdale's and their online business with the launch of Marketplace just a couple of months ago. So Bloomingdale's is a growth vehicle. That doesn't come at the exception of uh, Macy's because we're talking to different customers. And we obviously can learn from one another without becoming one another. All right. So, Jeff, what did you tell Tony when he took the job? You've been only there six years. We have a, I, you can't believe we have a terrific relationship with each other, and I'm really grateful for it. What did you say to him about, uh, about what Wall Street thinks about your company? Well, you know, he's been at on my side for the last number of years. So we've been in the same business, and we basically have known each other for 20 years. We were directors of stores together. He was running marketing. I was running merchandising. So I know Tony really well. And one of the things I was very excited about when the board made the decision to put it all in with him is that he's got this amazing tool chest. When you look at what he does in terms of innovation, brand building, what he does with talent development, he was absolutely the right choice. So we've had six months together where we're kind of passing the baton on various subjects. Still the CEO, but he is learning very quickly. We've got another four months to go. And so he's really understanding what the street believes in us. He understands that the imperative is to get profitable growth. That's what we're focused on. We know we're going to do that through our growth factors. And because of the fact that we have no debt maturities for a number of years, right. we have flexibility. 
So we are staying very, you know, the operational efficiencies that we've honed through the pandemic, the opportunity to take customer signals and really work on our customer centricity and really go where the customer is going and having the muscle to be able to do that is something I'm proud of. And he's going to take it to the next level. OK, well, Tony, so what do we do here? We got uh, Cole sells it. Uh, Eight times earnings. We, we've got Nordstrom at, at, at seven times earnings. Uh, these are retailers that I think are you're either better or comparable to. Let's be charitable to them. Uh, how come they have such higher price earnings multiple when you guys do many things right? We got to keep telling our story, Jim. I think okay. you opened with the fact that we're a portfolio company. Yes. We've got Macy's, Bloomingdale's, and Blue Mercury, three great brand names within retail. So, how do we lean into that? The five growth factors. How do we make sure we get credit for luxury? How do we make sure we get the multiple associated with uh, the beauty businesses? How do we make sure that private brand is not only a creative in margin, but a differentiator within our assortment at uh, Macy's? So, we have these strategies. I think the time is necessary to make sure that we tell our story as a portfolio company company that has the optionality between the different uh, areas to win the business. Remember, it's on mall and off mall now. It's right. digital and physical. It's uh, off price and full price. So this is a, a, a stock that you can invest in and feel confident that it's going to be there in good times and also in the tougher times. Well, you mentioned the portfolio uh, 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 companies, and I look at Blue Mercury, which is Maybe I look at Ulta, I look at Blue Mercury, look at Sephora. Blue Mercury can be those. It can really grow. At what point can that become a actual driver where people should say, I'm not selling this thing at three, four times or anything. I got Blue Mercury. I'm with you. Ten quarters of comp store sales growth. We've got uh, Mally Bernstein is the new CEO of uh, Blue Mercury, a terrific team she's assembled. They're an entrepreneurial group. They are focused on growth. They've got a great neighborhood concept where they're in all the affluent neighborhoods around the country. Opportunity for growth. We've given them the capital to really add to the store portfolio, build the digital business, strengthen the loyalty program. So expect to hear more about Blue Mercury in the future. All right, so one of the things that I think that you had to deal with, Jeff, that people don't realize is you had a tremendous amount of tourism when you took over, including tremendous amount from Asia, from China. It seems like that right now, uh, Macy's at Herald Square is, is not visited as often by tourists. Big strong, strong dollar, maybe not from China. Is that just something beyond anyone's control? What I would say is that Tony and I talk about that tourism is going to be a tailwind. So when you think about this, it's not going to be a tailwind in 23, maybe not in 24, but it will be. When you think about almost 3% of Macy's Inc. business was on international tourism, right. we think we got about half of that back. Okay. That's a point and a half of comp that is coming in the future. Now, and I do want to know, holiday season, what are you thinking and what are you thinking? Uh, because it is a huge part of your the percentage of your Absolutely. business. So when you look at it, we are more penetrated as a holiday destination than other retailers. Right. And so this is something that we start the moment we finish holiday of 22. Sure. We started on 23. So as we said at the end of the second quarter call, we feel very good about our Christmas strategies. We were just out in Jersey City looking at the early setups of that particular, uh, all those concepts, and we're feeling quite happy about it. So stay tuned. We feel very good about the role the beauty is going to play, the role of gift giving. The thing about the Macy's brand is when you think about those pieces of the business, it's a third of the business when you're in the first three quarters. Right. It's over 40% in the fourth quarter. And those businesses are really ripping right Holy now. Cow. And Tony, what are we going to be buying? And this is where we shine. This is about variety. So whether you want cashmere or you want a fragrance gift or you're, you're looking for a small leather accessory, a wallet, a handbag, something for the home, this is where department stores shine. And I think it's our opportunity at both Macy's and Bloomingdale's to be the gift destination this holiday season. Well, what can I say? Look, I'm, I, can you come on again? Because you're not leaving for a couple of months, Four right? Four months, Jim. All right. And we want to certainly drop by. Uh, Hurled Square, if you don't mind, and we're going okay. to stop at the toys, to toy area, which we think is so much fun. Uh, it has just been great in our time working together, and I can't wait to be working together with you. And it is working together. That's how I feel. What can I say? I don't mind saying it because it's how I feel. It's what I believe. Jeff Gannett, CEO of Macy's, Tony Spring, Macy's CEO elect. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Thank you, Jeff. Great to back you. Thank you. Coming up. A 360 view of the economy. Dig into the indicators with Paychex next. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call 
at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.